Let's try this video in 4K, even though I think most people watch videos on their phone. This is an RCA 1956 uh, 8PT7031. Now, this came in several different models. There was an 8PT7030, 7031, 7032, 7034. And they're all the chassis KCS100. So this is the KCS100 chassis. And looking on eBay and in some of the groups and stuff, the 7032 seems to be the most common. Now, I want to just do a quick analysis video on this TV today. It's supposed to rain and I got to get stuff done. Apparently the yoke... The deflection yoke, uh, plastic housings, the plastic rots on these. So I'd like to just, it's all metal. The controls are up here in the top. Just the back. Now these, there's a, a really neat, uh, base that goes on this and of course I didn't get the base with it but it's all tube of course 1956 you would hope so it's UL listed they consider this portable even though it it is 8 inch and when I got this it was on display and the CRT was lighting it up, was lighting up, but when I got it home, of course, it didn't do that. So, let me see if I could figure out how to get it open. It has some adjustments through holes in the bottom here. All right. Wow. Just for reference, let me read what the Sam's, how the Sam says to take it apart. So, uh, remove two knurled screws at the sides of the cabinet. Remove seven push-on type control knobs. Remove three screws holding cover and case assembly. I didn't see those. Take off the carrying handle by removing the two metal screws. Remove one metal screw at the bottom front of the cabinet. Well, there was one down here. And then there was one you had to take the knobs and then pull this thing out. This is the door where the knobs were. So anyway, it's out. Let's inspect. All right, it is a power transformer set, which means all 6-volt tubes. And most of them are 6U8. 6U8 is like the older version of the 6GH8. So, let's take a look at what we got in here. Looks like somebody has been in here before. This, of course, is not original. This does not look original. You can tell by the solder joints there. And I don't... This looks like these crappy old... Uh, paper and oil Japanese capacitors that always like to short. Nice solder job there to the chassis. You need a big iron when you're going to do that, at least 150, 200 watts, or else it's a cold solder joint. So yeah, this was blobbed on at some point. NTE. That looks kind of fresh. Another crappy oil and paper so 
someone wrote some notes the speaker looks good looks can be deceiving but you know Sounds like it doesn't sound like it's rubbing. I think I would like to test the CRT. Yeah, we got some writing here. I'm not sure what that. Not sure what that says. And we got some some waxies hiding back in there. And a bunch of waxies up in here. Let's see if we can trying to do this with a tripod. It's a little bit more difficult than being doing it handheld. I'll tell you that right now. So here's what we want to check out. I'm going to check the CRT, and I'd like to try and get a look at this. The plastic on the yoke case which looks like it's all encased in a big metal shroud here oh look at there's more goodness down here a nice selenium rectifier and more wax capacitors this is the era where you have to totally recap these, this is the era where the electrolytic has to go. The 50s stuff, the stuff got better in the 60s and early 70s when they went to the orange and red drop, even if they were paper mylar capacitors. But these things, you can get away with leaving the ones that don't have any DC voltage potential across them pretty much, but a lot of these have to go. Got it fused. KCS 100B. All metal. So I'm looking at as much of the yoke as I can see there. And I, I believe the plastic cap is on the back. And I'm not even sure why you would need to access that unless it was to change some of these difficult capacitors like some of these things are buried way down inside here Just part of my documentation routine. Some old school diodes there. This CRT is an 8DP4, 8 Delta Paul 4. Let's put it at about 6 volts. Oh boy, I can't beat that. This line right here, this little mark is a brand new CRT. 
Wow, look at the cutoff on this. Is this... Oh, great. We have a G1 short. Really? Yeah, I've double-checked everything, and, you know, that's why we got this out of control cut off gun balance where you turn it all the way down and it's still up and the emissions are pretty much so do we dare try remove G1 shorts G1 short no heater to cathode short maybe we can just blow that out of there Here we go. Remove G1 shorts. I'm on remove G1 shorts here. Bang. Did the needle go negative there? Ooh, look at it. It's like kind of flaky. Kind of cleared it out, but let's try it again. More's got to be better, right? Interesting, does it turn the filament off to remove? Nah. Yeah, it didn't show any shorts now. You, br you adjust this to bring it up to that line. So maybe that's why it had a roster on it when I first saw it and then the roster went away it developed a G1 short god I just hope it doesn't come back how do you looks good what I might do is I might Take the filament voltage up a little bit just to kind of make things expand and we'll see if the G1 shorts come back. Excellent em emissions. No G1 shorts. I think we might have made happy, make fixy. This is kind of entertaining. Somebody, of course, brown and black are the filament. Somebody had cut into these at one time for something. I wonder what that's about. So, something to think about. All right, it's powering up. I just want to see if clearing that G1 short gets it a, a raster back. And it does. Interesting. This is what it looked like when I initially saw it. And then when I got it home, it was dark. So, um... also no response from the tuner that's moving the tuner tubes around tuner seems kind of dead
putting an antenna on it, we get a little activity. If I look right down through a small hole right about here, I can see that back cap on the yoke and it's right down in here and I can see that yes the plastic is a bit dilapidated, rotten and you can see the white uh, white wire here that's the insulation is, I don't know what this is, the plastic starts to age and turn to dust almost but I bet we get a picture on this right now it's probably not very good but I'd like to get it hooked up to a source and just kind of benchmark it it's definitely gonna need caps and I'm hoping that I can change the caps without having to touch that yoke and there's probably somebody that knows this chassis very well because he's have almost a cult-like following that would know the specific details on that that failure point of that yoke and why it's a problem and they were talking about online 3d printing them and yeah that would be great if someone actually sat down and made a file and 3d printed a bunch of them well, let's get a signal let's get a signal on it I always like to do a semi-thorough analysis on a set before I decide I'm going to recap it or restore it. And this one sketches me out a little bit or makes me question its candidacy for that with the CRT with the G1 shorts. In my, my thinking, any of those restore or repair methods on a CRT tester, the rejuvenate, the clear shorts, that's all just a temporary band-aid measure that was really supposed to be there to get the to get by the enough time for the customer to order a new CRT or buy a new TV. Those are not permanent fixes. Those are temporary band-aid methods just just so the tech can order a CRT and schedule getting it installed. Those, that, I don't know about that clear G1 shorts. Is that a permanent fix? You know, am I going to spend five or six hours recapping and fighting with this and then have the stupid CRT, you know, short again and then I have to open it up? And not that I'm going to use it a lot, but I would like to be... I would like to be semi-confident I'm not just beating a horse that's going to have a heart attack after I bring it back to life. And I'm not so sure that that's the case with this. I got to I got to think about it for a while, but let's let's get it on the uh box and see how it plays.
Select quote secret? They impartially shop a select group of highly rated companies like these for your best rates. Give your family the security it needs at a price you can afford. Since 1985, Select Quote has saved over Jeez, talk about a buzzomatic detector. This thing puts Zenith to, to bed in that department. Oh, here we go. Smokeless Grail. Yeah. It really does, you know. Yeah, where's the smoke? I want my smoke. Tender cowboy and succulent jumbo shrimp. Barbecue back ribs. Look at the charred grill results. You'd never know it wasn't cooked in an outdoor grill. No, I wouldn't. The heat source reaching 450 degrees Fahrenheit connects to the grill plate so all that fat can drip through the grates into the drip tray below. This is the... Hey, this thing ain't half bad. Washer safe, so cleanup is a breeze. Look, this indoor grill is almost $300 and doesn't have our smoke extractor technology. But you won't pay $300, not even $200. Call or go online now for this exclusive TV offer. Now you can get the Power Smokeless Grill for three payments of $39.95. But this deal gets even better. Call now and get bonus number one, our non-stick griddle plate. $30 you know, it really doesn't even exhibit a lot of the problems of bad capacitors, the vertical deflection's not that far off. It's rock solid. It, it's a little soft. The picture's a little soft. I would think it could be a little bit sharper, something. That's adjusting the fine tuning. Oh yeah, my smokeless grill. We should do a smokeless grill EOL. We should get a plastic TV, get one of these smokeless grills and put the TV on the grill and see if it sucks up the smoke from the burning TV. Maybe one of those pink Disney TVs. All right. Maybe I'll recap this, maybe I won't. 
Maybe I'll use it for a little bit. Maybe I'll change a couple of the key caps, like the boost cap and some of the other caps in the grid circuits and that could damage something. And then I'll, I'll run it for a while and I'll see if the CRT remains reliable or if it decides to develop another short. Yeah, this this is a this is a symptom of bad capacitors right here. The, in fact, that's it. I think it just failed. Adjusting the horizontal hold. That's it. Capacitors just went bad. That's it. If you ever wanted to see capacitors go bad live, you just saw it. I cannot get the horizontal to lock. That's it. You saw it fail. Needs capacitors. The other thing that will cause this symptom is this part of the circuit right here. The horizontal AFC. And on the more modern sets it was diodes. But since this is a tube... I mean, the tube could have failed, but more likely it's some of these capacitors in this circuit. You know, one of these is a wax capacitor and it started leaking real bad. Like these here, it would cause this problem. Oh, yes, you can. All right. Needs capacitors.